Ah, if you want to hear Uber story, me, I, I, I won't tell you any Uber story. <laughs> I said Uber story. <laughs> I didn't ask you about it. Because you guys, oh, I didn't, I didn't ask you about Uber. Where you I just, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> you. They all started crying. <laughs> <laughs> I could relate because I was abroad then. Is, is that is that second passport worth it? Because many people are thinking oh, about it right now. Oh, uh, is that second oh, passport? Oh, because, because I don't care how big you are. There's going to come a time where somebody is going to it's just like today the trailer at the point was was the biggest thing and i saw people push Tony the trailer away to go and look at these boys but wait that must have been cool to remember that you knew whiskey when he was not only uh, not a star you knew when he was a studio uh, with all due respect the word they use is studio rat i think more than rats <laughs> more than rats because <laughs> that place that you sold out that nobody has sold it out so probably somebody's coming that will sell out stadium mm. that, this is the first time i'm actually talking about this but everything happened very fast he died in the best one of the best hospital for the for the kind of disease he was facing and then like six people from that film have died what yeah i don't have to stop because of that i have to try and continue when he told me way back he said huh d I said, I said the doctor said i don't have time that was the first time i was hearing that kind of thing it was okay we were in the studio it was recording he just told he just flipped it on me like that the doctor said i don't have time i like i couldn't do anything again i was like what is this guy saying now how you be telling me this kind of thing and he said yeah the doctor said i don't have time Believe it or not, uh, there was a time when I didn't know how to get into entertainment or into the entertainment industry. I was in the university. I had concluded that entertainment was what I wanted to do, but I had no idea how to break into the industry. And yet back in those days, there were a couple of guys who were already in the industry, who were doing some of the things that I wanted to do at the highest level. My guest today is one of them. First of all, he had one of the biggest songs in the country or some of the biggest songs in the country at that time now i didn't want to sing but he was big and i wanted to be big so that was that in the second place and this was closer to what i wanted to do it was the host and the mc of some of the biggest parties and events in the country i mean these were parties and events that it was a dream for me to just be invited to talk much less of performing art or emceeing and in the third place and perhaps most importantly he had a weekly show that my friends and I would gather around the television to watch. In the last couple of years, he's been relatively quiet, at least relative to how ubiquitous he used to be. On this one, I speak to the big bad wolf, <laughs> the incomparable Baba D of the Niger Ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> this is the deep dive. Oh, come stop that ruddy banging, no baba de troubles what you're demanding. Oh, come stop that ruddy banging, no baba de wango kiri kiri. That's us. That's us up. I'm here with the king of talk, Teju, and um, it's nice to see you again after so many years. The big bad wolf. It's great to be here. Love, love the <laughs> fact that I'm seeing you again. Look, first of all, let's acknowledge just how providential and serendipitous and special this interview is wow. how this happened <laughs> yeah oh, yeah so, so yeah, i reached yeah. out to you that was divine though. it was it was it was divine yeah, i, I reached divine. out to you thinking you were in lagos i was going to come and do this interview in lagos wow and then you said i i don't live in lagos i'm in stockholm <laughs> right <laughs> so I'm, I'm about to throw my hands up that okay it's done let me give up then you ask you said where in the united states are you I said, I'm in Texas. He said, okay, no problem. I'll be in Texas tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be in Texas tomorrow? 
that's 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 the point. It was meant to be anyway. That's why that's why I had to like I had to juggle my schedule and shelve yeah. some things as like this is meant to be. Yeah, yeah thank you, thank you. And uh, you 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 yourself you've proven over the uh, time. Like I tell a lot of people that after a time, um, when you stop that high level performance, all that you have left is your track record and what you've done. And I'm like, Teju baby face invites me. I'm ready to share some things for Teju, man. <laughs> Teju is, is, is a great guy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, so you live in Sweden? Yeah, I've been, I mean, I've been in Stockholm for, for years. And I've been shuttling around. I have a lot of activities in Nigeria. Like, you know, I'm in Nigeria yeah. like three times in a year. Okay. So a lot of people don't get it that I'm not outside Nigeria. And let's get it straight. I'm not one of the Jack Bauer generation. <laughs> 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 we can remember um, 2000. What year was that? I were in London doing a, some, some mini tour. Man, that might have been, that would have been 2000 and somewhere between 2006 and 2008. I'm bad with dates. Yeah, it would have been, I'm, I'm good with faces, but I'm bad with dates. It would have been those years, it would have been 2006 to 2009. Yes. I remember we were, we were on our way to Manchester and then you asked me, you're like, what are you doing in that place now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was, that was, that was definitely 2006. It was 2000. Yeah, that that Manchester trip. Yeah, when, when, yeah, the, when the bus. Yeah, you going asked to, me. Yes. Yeah, we're on the bus, and then you asked me, hey, "Really, what are you doing in that place?" And I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> "Well, I mean, fast forward, I I came back home, uh, had an album release that you hosted. Yes, yes, yeah, um, and um, since then I was shuttling back Sweden, Nigeria, Sweden. Yeah. Nigeria. I've been doing the same thing basically, shuttling Sweden, Nigeria, Sweden, Nigeria. But right now, um, as a family man and everything, my, my people are over there, and I'm still shuttling Sweden, Nigeria. So that's yeah. just it. I remember that one because you were in you were in Sweden for a minute. Uh, in the that might have been the so the late 2000s. You mm-hmm. you were there for a minute. I remember when you came back for a particular reason. I will never forget. So I think you had been away more extended than usual. So I think you had been away one time for like a year yeah. or thereabout. Then you came back with at that time. I remember thinking that this girl was one of the hottest white girls I'd ever seen in my life. <laughs> one of the most beautiful white women. And you'd come and she was she was wearing that fedora yeah. and you wear the fedora yeah. and you guys went everywhere together, the headies, all everywhere, the parties. Yeah. But you I, met her before then because we were on the tour together. Too. Okay. Yeah, there were two of them that came in on the tour that we had a show in London and we also had a show in Manchester. And okay. They came in from Sweden then, but okay. I mean, we went to Nigeria and everything. Yeah, I always wanted to ask you. I never got around to ask you. I, I knew that they used to perform with you, right? Yeah. 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 So was that all it was? Uh, yeah, Benny. That was all it was. Benny. <laughs> <laughs> Benny. Ah, the Jew. Oh. <laughs> okay. So do you all still keep in touch? And I mean, life, life is, uh, life is ever evolving. Um, um, we've evolved and um that's, that's something in the past you know? okay okay that's that's in the past so sweden is where the family <laughs> sweden is where the family it's where is the right, family is right, right now. now yeah right okay. now yeah and i don't know if you remember this so. hmm. um baba d you were you're one of the meanest mcs I, just <laughs> wicked i don't know if you remember that our first Night of a Thousand Laughs audition. Yeah, that's that ever. encounter. That encounter. Ever. <laughs> this was the year 2000. It was 24 years ago. Oh, yeah. It was at the OJ's. OJ's in a... You know, it was Jazz, Jazzville. 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 Was it? it was yeah. Jazzville. Jazzville. In a Yaba. Yaba. Okay, so yeah, yeah. this was the first time we were going to be comedians and there were, there were well, five of us. Was that, was that post-diamond ring for you? Oh, yeah. That was, that, was, that was post-diamond ring. It was post-diamond yeah. ring. So you, you had a... You had a standing in the entertainment industry. Well, I, look, I did, but I didn't as far as comedy was yeah, yeah. concerned. Uh-huh. So that it was that diamond ring guy is trying to be yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. Like that, that, that <laughs> so, I mean, there were five of us that night. There was, there was, I don't know if you remember. I remember was. vividly, but I don't remember the rest. I know Basketman was there. Okay. I know Bright was there. Okay, so. I, I know you were there. Yeah, there was a strange enough, I go die was there. I go die was there. I go die was there. I go save was there. I go save, yeah. I go save, rem- yeah. I go save reminds me. And there's a guy you won't remember because you ruined his career that no, night. No, the guy was. <laughs> who, who was the guy? Don't tell me the he's guy, big now. No, he's not big. Old. I said you ruined his career. I said he's big. Nah, I didn't ruin anybody's career. 
the guy's name was Emeka. And we were in Unilag together. We were members of the same acting group in Unilag, Theater 15. Oh, yeah, Theater 15, theater right? 15, so yeah. I, I didn't know he was coming to the audition. I just got there and I met him. And he was the first person to get there of all of us. So he had written <laughs> his name down as Emeka University of Lagos. And so when you eventually called us, you were the MC, so you called us to the stage. And so just imagine that scene. Everybody, the senior members of no, the entertainment let industry. Me, let me just tell you the kind of people there. Ali Baba, Dan Juma, uh, Opa Williams, Fred Amata, Zubi Enebeli, uh, the late... Well, was there? Everybody that was like... Sam Loco. Popping. Yeah, the they were, popping they were there. <laughs> so, these were the people we were supposed to perform for. Let me put that in context. So... Yeah, Binta Ayomogaji. Binta Ayomogaji. <laughs> they, were, they were all there. So, so you call this Emeka guy first who had written his name, Emeka University of Lagos. And the guy just came and he messed up. And about three minutes into his performance, so, you jumped on stage and you snatched the microphone for him from him. And you said, you said, I'll never forget. My friend, look, comedy is not by force. If you know you are not funny, my friend go and see that in one place. So so Fred Amata was they say, I go stole you in my shoe. <laughs> the whole essence, let me tell you how the whole thing came about. Was like, okay, uh, night, at that time, Night of a Thousand Laugh was the biggest comedy platform yeah. in Nigeria. So um, they're trying to get some guys that can really fit in on that stage that won't flop. And uh, Opa was like, okay, this is how we're going to have it. I know that some of them might not be funny. You know, some of them, <laughs> some of them might not be funny. Some of them will be funny. So you need to be able to check the time and everything, so we won't bore them, and people will think that this is what they're going to get on the major platform. Yeah. So I could remember very well that Bright Basket Mouth had seen okay a DTT show. There's a Lecky show then. It used to be DTT on a, a Lecky. Yeah, it was Lecky, a big show. Yeah. So I seen Bright. He, he performed he, with some boys, they were rapping, and uh, they were quite okay. And then he went back as a comedian and grabbed the mic and made people laugh, and it really cracked us up. You know, then it was like fun, me and my late brother and everything, we were just like, because as of then, everybody in the entertainment industry used to come around us, like real, real, real. And I was like, ah, Larry, this guy is good, though. This, yeah, 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 but why is he rapping now? He's <laughs> a rapper. So I went on stage and I told people, when it was Bryson, that okay now this guy i can guarantee this guy um if he if he doesn't perform well you can stone me yeah let's have him there i brought him on stage and he killed it and you killed it as well oh yeah, yeah we're so the only two that got through that, that killed night. it yeah we're the only three yeah. that got that, that the only two that got through that night <laughs> by the way so when i make her left i chased him up the thing you said was this next one too is from university of lagos <laughs> <laughs> You, you, I, I don't think you knew it was me. You, know, you just said this next one. No, I, I, I knew. He, 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 I knew, he I, better be funny. You had, you had a profile hey, there. Baba Dia, I was <laughs> dying. But we survived. Mm. <laughs> and, he, and he killed it. And yeah, he killed it. And uh, some 14 years or how many years later, here we are. So. 24. 24. Believe it or not, 24 yeah, years. <laughs> so, so, I mean, speaking of that, how does that make you feel to, to know or to remember that this were 24 years down the line from when you were one of the biggest stars. In fact, this I want to ask. At that time, that same night, hmm. Sound Sultan performed his upcoming album. album. Yeah. The album wasn't out yet. He yeah. performed Jack Bajantis. Yeah, well, yeah. If I did mathematics first of all, yeah. and then he did Kole Yewon yeah. that night. So he was, you were the biggest star at that time. How, how does it feel to, to have been there so long and to have seeing your brother rise yeah. and rise and rise yeah. a lot of people forget actually that uh his, his rise was um it was something that i was i was a part of from beginning when i had uh, the show tv that's a variety program on nt uh, on a M mitv mitv was it mitv or mitv mitv okay. and i was placed against newsline at a point and people were still watching you know, because I was like, we're bringing in the fresh entertainment. I mean, who wasn't there on the show? Bas uh, the Plantation Boys, 
tribesmen remedies uh, remedies uh, uh maintain was there maintain everybody that was somebody was popping i mean everybody was there so people like to that orange jumpsuit it was their sauce now and <laughs> and i was dope and i was cute there i was very young and handsome then <laughs> <laughs> now, so uh, at that point, uh, Sultan had a slot on the program. I made sure he had a slot on there where he would come and do his rhyme thing. Yeah, you know kids. Oh yeah, you know kids. You go meet by eight for <laughs> the gates. Yeah, that yeah. was that. So he became uh, people started looking at him from there because those rhyme it was very unusual. Nobody was doing that rhyme scheme and everything. So yeah, uh, I can remember I had a lot. So when he would come in this week, people would be talking about it and everything. And uh, I'm like, you guys don't even know what is coming up. This guy is so talented that you don't even know what is coming up. I've, I mean, I've heard the music. When we were younger, uh, I'll go to University of Ibadan. I'll come in, he'll tell me, listen to this song. Da, 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 da. I'm like, okay, it's okay, okay. The song keep getting better until the point I realize that who? This guy has got music. This guy is going to be in music longer than me. Mm. Knew, you, knew, you actually knew that I you knew, knew you knew Sam Sultan was going to be in music longer than oh, you. Was no dummy around there. I, I could remember one particular artist that used to come to me that I should write a song for him. So I was trying to help him. Then I called the artist because he was really pushy and was trying. I said, come. Like, you know what? I didn't know I was giving him a cheat code. I said, you see my brother, that boy, he can write you. And the guy got angry. So because I did come meet you, and they push me to your brother Abi. It'll be your fault now. I can't, I can't forget that is then. And so turn to Neil because he, he heard us. I was like, if you get this guy now, this guy is very good. He can write song for you. He'll write better for you than. You gotta say, ah, it'll be your fault. This is, and the guy drove off. Who was the guy? Cooper Victory. Hey, Cooper Victory. Cooper Victory was the guy. Oh. Seven years later. Like that, your brother, man. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I'm going talk to Sultan. Sultan, ah, by then, Sultan was already when Kimono was on on part of the people asking for song. This was already asking for song, you know. But they were all asking Sam Sultan to write them songs. Oh, I, I tell no lie, bro. Even the late Ras Kimono. Yeah, the, that's how humble Ras Kimono was when it got to a point, and after it was like, hey, D. I yeah, see that little youth, man. <laughs> <laughs> see that little youth there. That little youth. Yeah, that little youth guy. I say, Akim, you know you're a great pooper to all of us. So link up anytime, anytime, anytime. So uh, I, I, I never forget those incidents. Like, I knew the guy was the guy was very talented because he was extra talented, you know. Mm. Mm. How older than him were you? Uh, Sultan is, uh, between us, there's a, there's a girl. Okay. We have a girl. She's a, she's a lecturer in Lasso. Okay. And... Um, the whole age gap was like five years, okay. but a lot of people thought it was. Some even people even think Sultan was older than me. <laughs> yeah, but some people, <laughs> yeah, thought some, was... people, some people thought Sultan was older than me. So that's that's the interesting part. But we had a, we had quite a gap. Okay, so uh, at the time when you were hot, where was it? For example, the first song that came out that we knew. Mm. I mean, that song just killed me. I was I wanted to be you. I mean, I wasn't singing. I, it was not like I was singing, but I just wanted what you had. Yeah. It was stardom. It was um, you are a father, you yeah, baby change. Was, now, that, now when we talking about history of all this Afro B, yeah. blah, 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 that was that was like the first song that had a rhyme scheme that had Yoruba and this whole thing about Afro beat mixed in it. That was that was like nineteen ninety seven. And it was I, I remember touring the whole Western University, Osu, everywhere, Ife, Unilag, and, uh, Unilag. We did Unilag. We I came did. to see you in Unilag, and the girls went crazy. That was when I think that was one of the seminar seminar moments when I wanted to become an entertainer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still meet people today. I meet people today. So I, I grow the anti when those artists are laughing. I just laugh that oh, I, I was one of those ones that affected your your teenage days and I just laugh over it and it's very interesting. You know, it was it was quite interesting then. I, I wonder if these guys still have it like that, but I know they do. <laughs> so he was he was in the university then wanting to be you. Uh, no, but this is the truth of the matter. Um I I pushed out and actually in a way that um, um, I didn't know if he would like. Sultan was a laid-back guy. It was easy. 
you know Sultan was easy and is a laid back guy but I was like you have this talent you have to go I was already out I was already going to, we, we were not like um, we used to live in uh, Festac satellite area and for you to live in satellite and go to the island you must have some kind of special waku without your parents taking you there but I had that kind of drive I could go anywhere I could mix I had a lot of friends and everything so I was like look with this talent you have to do this you have to move you have to so the very first time I got recognized was uh, Lucky Sun Splash that was in 1995 so that was my backup singer <laughs> so we <laughs> so I'll drag him along so I'll just drag him along uh, Larry Larry everybody that met me they met Sultan but a lot of people were sleeping on him they didn't understand but we were always uh, together when okay. I was doing the uh, MITV show yeah uh, he was always with me I had my small car then we'll, we'll go home together we'll go and do everything together you know I was just like I I I know he was talented oh I mean good because I mean yeah so for us for us who knew you back then who knew you guys back then and who knew how the first album went I mean you were your fingerprints were all over that mm. anybody who doubts that just needs to listen to uh, mathematics yeah. that was you doing the rap you know no, uh -huh. now thank you this is time to correct this you see that rap I shot the video yeah I conceptualized the video I, I shot the video that rap was originally done by Lambo the virus okay you know Lambo now yes you know Lambo you Lambo know from Unilab Lambo, yeah, yeah, Lambo. Lambo. Lambo did the Lambo was also on my song so the end and Lambo was no, nowhere to be seen when we were shooting the video and somebody had to be there to shoot the video so that's why I, I, I came in and I did the I did the rap <laughs> actually miming to Ram, Lambo's verse oh. Oh, there, yeah, I, was, I was miming to Lambo's verse you see that this is what I say before Nigerian music was popping before Nigerian people didn't understand we were like way way before then so when you tell someone you're shooting your video they're like video okay what was video like I could still remember a guy like uh, Energy Energy is uh, used to be uh, uh, with I think Maven or this record label, but now it's a it's a CEO on one of those labels. He told me, "Do you remember in UI, you came to me in one room like that, and you told me I was the guy that you met, and you told me that I should tell a maker and this other guy that they should meet you at Trans that you're shooting a musical video." I said, "Yeah, you were the one." I said, "Yeah." I said, "Who shows who shows a video then?" That he didn't want. That's not what I was <laughs> that I was saying. But now, fast forward is a major player in the entertainment industry. Is 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 doing it right now. Is signing artists and everything. So it was it was like way 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 before um, the whole thing got like this. So it's it's, it's quite interesting as a journey. Uh, by the way, before I move on from from that, um, on that whole album, by the way, I should let you know what my favorite song is. I used to make Sultan sing that song at every show that he did for me. I had you just guess that whole Jagbajan. What do you think my favorite song was? That album was very, very interesting. Let me remember. The album was titled mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds of the Frustrated Mouth. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> that's the first time I knew how to spell. It was yeah, on the it was on the uh, cover the of his. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, people are still frustrated now, though. Yeah, I had, a, I had quite a lot of songs. My on, favorite okay. song on that album was, and that that was saying something because every song on that album, yeah, on that yeah. album, was a hit. Every yeah. single song. My favorite song was Kuleyon. Kuleyon. I was what? on that song. Well, yes. Was, yeah, I was on that song. If you know pity my condition, no, if you don't know my situation, know the pity my condition because Kuleyon. <laughs> I say bobo, I no fit to cry. Kole ye won, what I for don't come for my eyes. I think Two Face Two was on that. It was it was such a. It's it's strong. The the lyrics. That's why I knew like this guy was because what he was. Hey, I remember now. I day with certificate. Kole ye won. Yes, after I graduate. Kole ye won. But it's still happening now. The the whole thing is still is still happening now. So. When I listen to songs like this and I listen to that, it's like Nigeria, would Nigeria ever get better? Mm. Would Nigeria? Because everybody's been singing this thing, the same thing, over, over. Look, we're talking Kole Yewa before some people in the music industry right now, before they even knew that there was a music industry. And it's still, it's still the same thing existing, you know, so. Do you get your flowers, though? Do you think you get your dues? I don't think I get it enough. And I don't, and I'm not bothered, you know, really. I don't think I get it enough, but I'm not bothered. Like in a, uh, the only one that gets me like a little bit was 
Like um, when I when I did a write up on Ayoshunaya's uh, Afrobeat evolution, and it went it went viral because I felt like um, when it comes to history, you don't tamper with history. You understand because these are things that have been done and things that and there was a process and there are proceedings that led to this pro so when people come in and they jump into history from where they started without properly researching where the whole thing started from and it's a little bit i'm still alive damn it <laughs> <laughs> okay so i i didn't see your right up uh, so you had uh, oh, an went, issue with, went, went with, viral, with, with, with it yeah because i felt like um i felt like he, he jumped in a little bit without properly researching the background of where he started but it's you know it's very human for everybody to feel like i need to get my props you know that is human and um uh, it's very human as well for someone to feel like oh when i did this i was the first person that that did it nobody did it you know like saying like uh your video revolutionized the video make come on man i was shooting videos like Am I, are we joking? I was joking. I was shooting videos. They, they all, the people that had like some of the best video that then was like as a director. Uzo Dima Okwechi. Uzo Dima Okwechi, that's the man. Yes. That's the man. Uzo Dima Okwechi, myself, and uh, who else was also making outstanding videos then? And maybe Kinsley Ogoro. Yeah. Kinsley Ogoro. And, and that was it. That was it. We were, we were, we were pushing the envelopes regarding making music videos and everything and um if you're not gonna say uh baraje tries my video i was there when that was because i'm i already had my journey as a filmmaker trying to so i was there and the video is like that the video revolutionized the video was ah nah bro nah. Mm. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and afrobeat didn't start from london bro it didn't take don the banjo and don jazzy to come back to nigeria to make the whole thing pop we, we had an industry that was emerging but with due respect when they came in things became larger things get larger and larger and now from rema to this so things is an evolution things process so don't come in from the middle and say this was no you have to be able to trace and give a proper Okay. You know, that's that's what I just feel. Okay, so flowers is one thing. That is to get honor and respect for the work. That no, they one, do give me respect. No, you yeah. got to respect me, man. That's, oh, no, no. no. I, I get that. I get that. I'm saying that respect is one thing. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. yeah. The, the thing I'm about to ask is, uh, do you feel like you've gotten the rewards uh, financially and otherwise bro, from... Bro, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the most uh, contented human beings alive, you know. So I, every day I, I told my friends, like, I've lived three men's life mm -hmm. all in one. Uh, tell you, there's no other thing that makes me as um, happy as a human being that I meet people that I've met over the years and they start... You know, it's been a very lovely journey. I've been to most of the countries in the world not like i mean not in africa but have major cities if you're talking major cities cairo new york uh, uh maybe tokyo moscow you know I've, I've, I've been everywhere and i've experienced that you know that experience a man is the sum of his experience so I've, I've had most of those cities around i've, I've experienced that i've had um, i have a lovely family i have fans that reckon with me what else do i need i don't need any flowers i came into houston this is my first time in houston by the way oh really i came into houston and grown men can stop what they're doing yesterday and they made me they kept me up to two they were up to 20 guys they kept me up to two my friends and everything oh, yeah, in houston, let's let's hang out and everybody came together that's that's that to me is uh is, is, is enough flowers is enough reward it's it's enough it's enough for me and i was I'm, I'm still very active i still do what i do <laughs> awesome yeah. awesome but you were never it's funny you were never signed to kenny's music uh, no i was signed to kenny's music i even took so time to kenny's music oh Actually, you were i even took so time to kenny's music okay because at the point now um we are doing our own thing and john ninja we are but i i i i think that at the point you need to leverage on other bigger platforms so i went to kenny Ogunbe and we spoke and i told him and i said i want myself and my brother as well and um being the person that he is he took us in and uh, we were with him for two years we had uh, one album 
deal there after the expiration of the contract we went our separate ways so i was with kenny is one of the guys that also pushed my when i did the the shorty storm step to make sure the job it was it was for kenny ogumbe kenny's music and okay. he pushed it to um to a very very reasonable length so shout out to kenny ogumbe we appreciate you baba keke you know for some, reason, <laughs> for some reason as you're talking um the song that keeps popping in my head just watching your face is um do you like what yeah, you see that's, two face. <laughs> <laughs> that's the great man you know saying to dibia oh yeah, so dear yeah yeah that was that was heavy that was that was when um i started seeing prospect in the nigerian music industry because as of then we we're just um, a bunch of local boys trying to get on the radio so this thing about paving way or not paving way this is where i might not stand on it because there was a time nigerian music was not on the radio we couldn't get ourselves on the radio it was basically impossible to get on the radio because some people have been now what are these guys singing they can't sing this thing and this it's rubbish it's rubbish it's rubbish don't put them on the radio so we had to fight to get on the radio these are these are facts like people like uh uh, uh um uh, Frank Edoho, uh, um, what's uh, Frank's name? Uh, Anno, Anozie, Charles, yeah, Charles and them. Yeah, that they had to one will go to them and say, ah, there's this general manager in FRC and that says they shouldn't play any rap in Nigeria. They shouldn't play any that you guys are sound. You know, we it was a battle. It was a battle, and eventually people started accepting it. People are st- to the point that it gets to now that you don't even listen to foreign music again, that Nigerian music began. So there were people that actually put on things to get to that level, you know. So the, what do we do? Do we, um, there was, uh, there's a part that everything, there's this shift. There was a shift when uh, the internet came in. Yes. Some people just discovered Nigerian music. So that was, so a lot of them, they think that's when Nigerian music started. The ones that just this, that came, this Gen Z uh, internet people, you know. So they don't understand. They don't, and we don't. I don't expect them to understand. You understand. So when they come in from their own angle and they says like this, you just you just lead them and say maybe eventually you guys will understand later. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, uh, so um, please accept my condolences again on the passing of Sultan of San Sultan. Yeah. You know, but I when I think when I think of that, and I think of you, uh, and I think of the family. First of all, it's it's that no, nobody can understand. It's unimaginable the 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 level of pain that that must have brought. Uh, but for me, when I think of you, especially who is in the industry, I think that that might have shaken your faith in the order of things, because you 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 just mentioned you alluded to the fact that Sultan was laid back. But, but that was him. So this was a guy who didn't drink, didn't smoke, wasn't promiscuous. He was chill. He was in fact, he was the good guy as far as entertainers yeah, go. He was a good guy. He was a good guy. Yeah. And you and I know guys. They drink, if, if they stop drinking right now, the breweries would have a problem with selling. They smoke like chimneys. They're all up in the mm-hmm. girls. They're partying. Mm-hmm. They're kicking around. And this cool guy is one who who, who gets to go. I mean, that must have shaken your faith in the order of things a bit. It must have, yeah. That must have messed, it messed with me. Yeah, yeah. Because, um, you see, first and foremost, I thank God for the fact that, okay, we have um, believe in God, you know, and um, uh, a bigger understanding of life and what it is. Uh, for me, it changed me. It really changed me. I, I, I realized uh, that I got closer to death. You know, through that experience and the whole concept of living, you know, so uh, it changed me a lot. And uh, I understand that we all have our, we all have our limited. That when the director cut, when he says cut, it's cut. Nobody's asking for extra shoot. When it's cut, it's cut. So because of that, you, he, he, he did, he did well. He lived a good life, and I, and for one thing, I was happy that he felt the love. In his last days, he felt the love. He got the love back from people that that matters to him and people that were his fans and family and everything. But it did it did it did break me a lot to to be honest with you because I uh, this is the first time I'm actually talking about this. But um, I 
and it felt like but then again he had done a lot and they have to be i don't have to stop because of that i have to try and continue what we're doing the the brand name that we have and to pass it on to the next generation of people and i think that is my own responsibility and that is what i'm doing right now uh, um, when you say it got you closer to death i mean how how do you process that practically okay now people think like they have the whole time even at our age that we've gone round and seen and we still believe like <laughs> in, in the death for, <laughs> like for, for some strange reason but the number of when when death you hear somebody ah that guy died ah okay ah, he died oh. now give me beer that guy is dead. but when when it hits close when it hits very close i mean this is an encounter with every human being when it hits that close you are you realize that oh it could have been me it could have been anybody then you understand like okay so i don't have that kind of luxury of time and his death again showed me like what matters most in human life is the people that you touch it's the life that you touch he touched a lot of lives that i'm even surprised you know i'm surprised he was a giving guy he gave he gave more than he had you understand it was a very giving person and i was like okay if this guy could do and the response after that if uh, people's response this criteria if they have one section that they mark people's response to get to heaven i think it's in heaven right now hmm. mm, that's 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 deep uh how 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 is the family doing his, his wife they're, kids? They're, they're doing great they, 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 the son is doing great the daughter is doing great the wife is doing great and uh a lot of love from different angles and everything and they, 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 they play great. you know that's that's a that's a nice and perhaps surprising thing and unusual thing because i remember that especially in the mid in the mid to late 2000s we lost a couple of comedians almost back to back and i remember that back in those days we would all have these meetings in fact is what happens generally when people die mm. people come together and talk about all the things they are going to do for the family and it never ceases to amaze me that we never do any of those things. We never return to people say they are going to send the kids to school. They say they are going to open an account for the wife. We we never do any of those mm. the things. So in this instance, what what has the experience? All right, for me um somehow, you know, grace is always a grace of God, you know. When he was sick, we didn't go cap in hand asking anybody for anything. Everything took care of itself. We he had the best treatment he died in the best one of the best hospital for the for the kind of disease he was facing at that time that was the best hospital in the world in new york john Hopkins. that was like you know it doesn't get better than that and um after his uh death we well, got uh if you're more aware of now music to manage his uh, his catalog his estates and everything we did a post humorous album we did uh, launching for the album in New York. We, we moved. Uh, a lot of people have been doing sounds of time remembrance yearly, yearly all around the world. I was just here in Houston, like I told you, my first time. It's like, yeah, hey, that's that guy that organized the sounds of time remembrances. I was like, in Houston too. How can you remember? It? You understand what I'm saying? It's, it's it's unprecedented. It was not like a tragic incident or or, or something that is making people angry, like uh, like the Mobad incident. It was just something that somebody just died from it, and people took it upon themselves to gather all around the world. That's 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 deep, man. I'm <laughs> I, I and I know nobody is godly for me like that. <laughs> 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 I, I'm sure of that. But I mean, it's it's awesome, man. Don't you? Do? It's awesome. New York, California, London, Italy, Houston, South Africa. You understand? Gathering. There was like a gathering of Nigerians. So this guy that died somewhere. So what else? The and the, the family. The, the 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 wife is a she's a lovely lady the kids are growing so we just thank god it's that's that's all we have to do just thank god because everybody nobody's getting here out of here alive anyway mm. uh, the the, <laughs> the yoruba say they say beseniku 
Nobody's getting it's, out it's of here. It's a debt. It's a debt that all of us will pay. Will pay. Nobody's getting out of your life. So we we know that the moment you know that you you will live in that light and you try to do your things in because after 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 it's all said and done, we all become a memory. I remember my friend OJB when he told me way back. He said, "Ha, D." I said, "The doctor said I don't have time." That was the first time I was hearing that kind of thing. It was okay. We were in the studio, was recording. He just told, he just flipped it on me like that. The doctor said, "I don't have time." I like, I couldn't do anything again. I was like, "What is this guy saying now? How are you be telling me this kind of thing?" And he said, "Yeah, the doctor said I don't have time." You understand? So it's it's, it's the the God says there's an angel of death cast upon us. That's when the time is up. Uh, you you go, you must go. So we just have to accept it and learn to live. A life that would um, everybody now has to decide. How do you want to be remembered? You ask yourself that question. How do I want to? be? Because people are gonna go go by their business. People are gonna the moment you die, even the loved ones, the wife, everybody's gonna move on. They go back their business. But when they remember you, when that comes, how do you want to be remembered? So you know, you just give me goosebumps. I, I can feel. I can still feel the hairs on the back of my neck standing up when you mentioned OJB. Because I, I I I posted something on YouTube, and I think even on Instagram a couple of days ago when I said that look, um, no matter who you are, no matter what you do, at the end of the day, I'm sorry to tell you, nobody's going to remember you. None of us are going to be remembered. They they remember you for a while. The only difference in life is how long it takes to forget us. Do some that. of us some of us are going to be forgotten immediately. Immediately, others are going to be forgotten. Maybe five years later, others twenty years later, others a hundred. But eventually, they're going to forget every single one of us and what we did. Yeah, because Chidaki says uh, they only they only remember you till they let light their nest blunt. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was discussing with my friend yesterday. Then we were saying about uh, some private vault. Uh, okay, let, let me, like when you die here. The land that you're buried is leased for 100 years. Then after 100 years, they uproot your body and put somebody else's body there. Really? Uh, no, it's normal. It's law here, don't you know? <laughs> no, except I... you buy the land. Except you buy the land. So then we're like, 100 years. Eh, 100 years, not it too. <laughs> Nobody's going to really ask for which grand, great grandchildren is going to be asking for my great, great, great dad. Do you know where your great, great, great granddad's body is? I don't even know who my great granddad is. Forget so his bro, body. We're all going to go. This is, everyone is going to. We're going to be wiped out, like like wiped out completely. That we're just going to remain memories. Maybe somebody that has videos and catalogs of work with the emergence of YouTube. Now maybe some kid somewhere will go and scroll into YouTube of 2000 and <laughs> look at these people. Look at the camera they're using and. Then, you know, maybe then, because right now we're 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 in a level where we record each other, and the, but apart from that, everybody's going to be forgotten. We're just going to disappear. Oh, JB, that just gave me. Sh- I mean, that just gave I me. I went to Lagos. Those uh, bombs. Some couple of months ago, when yeah, three months ago, I was in Lagos, and I drove around. I took the band there, and I remember. Oh, yeah, JB, to, to go to that market. To go to the market where the church was. When you when you come in, like uh, you know the road now. Yes, now you. When you yeah, pass, you come in from Shita and you, yeah. you turn by the uh, by Olaya, the the you canteen. Say no more. Say no uh-huh. more. And then say you no turn more. Say no more. Say no more. <laughs> so I, I I drove there. I was gonna meet up with some friends there, uh, and I was going to drive past OJB's house. And something stopped and I said, Nah, I'm not gonna do this. I parked the car, opened the gate, went into the house, and uh, I saw Mabel. And she was like, ah, my body, yeah, like my sister, Auntie Mabel, everything, everything, my guy, how's the kid, how's everything, how's everything. Um, that's somebody at a point that he be walking there when I come in there, there like that. We're friends, apart from being like artist producer. I was he only did two songs for me anyway, or three songs, but we were friends. You understand? We could relate. I know that he works at home, so he's been working all day. When I come in, I had the car. He would jump into my car. 
he will show me eh, we, me and OJ we went to every joint in Suruleri every joint there was no joint in Suruleri we were joint, joint hopping you understand so I could uh, connect with that ah, this is my guy and I'll, so I will drive past his house because it's not our life no it can't happen it can't happen so that's, that's after a time people change places change account of events get blurry we remember ourselves now and and you know just like when you reached out i was like ah, it would be a good opportunity to see teju again or when last did we see maybe 2007 possibly i remember it was at uh the head gone uh, oh were you at head gone premier oh yeah I was were you in nigeria gone. oh yeah were you in nigeria when we of course we're at the head gone. how come you didn't act in head gone uh, I was. I, I don't know. I might have been. I, I don't know what happened. I might have been. Were you busy? Nice, yeah. yeah. Head gone was what year? Two thousand fourteen. It's two thousand fourteen. It's six years. I think it's six years. Two thousand and fourteen or two thousand and four? No, fourteen. It was. It, it was, was recent. I was. I, mean, not, I don't. I don't know where I was. Maybe I. Premier, maybe I. Tra- I was at Head Gone Premier. Yeah. Uh, Muson Center. Yeah, I was at Headgun Premier. For real? Yeah. I thought you had traveled then or something. I, uh, sincerely, if you are, uh, you have been on Headgun. Uh, everybody was on Headgun. Uh, there would have been a room for Tejo on Headgun. No, 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 no. I can't even. You know, this date thing messed me up because I could remember now Headgun. Like six people from that film have died. What? Yeah. Okay, let's start counting. <laughs> that that really freaks me six up. Six okay. The the guy the guy that ah, yeah, 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 they, they one of the this in the one about the theater artist yeah uh, he died. Uh, producer, San Sota is late. Um, who else is there? Let me, uh, the there's popular Ibadan comedian, uh, Baba something that played the laundryman that the wife the police came is dead. Um, what? count like six of them yeah it was six of them that died that passed on from that film six people six people i can't my memory is failing me six people from that film died. and I, I was like okay now i went to we're doing i'm doing a program i do what, what i do right now i do projects and things like that and i shoot documentary and i do film still in entertainment you know so i'm still connected yeah and, yeah i i just uh, did a, 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 a travel log program from a Ghanaian network that took me to lagos i had people reasonable people coming through like alibaba basket mao bovi bimbo akintola bimbo shomoye uh who else was the charles or car for that the freeze and, and they could they could spare me their time and that was very lovely and um we did uh we we always do like a Nigerian hangout at sports event. So myself and Sultan we created the uh, Nigerian hangout at the uh, World Cup in um, in in Russia. Yeah, we created that in in, in Russia, and um, that was. What am I trying to link that up with now? I'm I'm, I'm getting. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I'm getting uh, that in Russia. So now uh, we're going to be doing. Um, I'm going to be doing the the Olympics in Paris in July. Okay. Yeah, the Nigerian hangout. We're in partnership with the Nigerian Olympian Association, and uh, we're just going to have a series of events at the Olympics. And um, the the two partners, it was a three-way partners. There's uh, Wasiu Onitiri. Onitiri is like uh, is a filmmaker, is a producer. He used to work with Tajudin at the and everything, and Sultan and myself. They're both dead. Wow. They're both dead. I'm the only one now. From the space of Moscow to the Olympics. You understand? It's just, it's just Okay, so I can get why you say you're closer to death. You have Bro, I mean I'm 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 uh, the way I am right now, I I even tell my people that are close to me that look, you don't have time. Nobody has time. Yes, mm-hmm. we're all on borrowed time. Okay, you, look, there's something you mentioned when you were talking about um, Sultan, about how uh, he went through the treatment in the best hospitals and there was no recourse to public funds. You never had to reach out to the public. That is, that is a lesson that I think needs learning a bit, maybe in our industry, because we see time and time again, whether it's actors or musicians, when, 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 when stuff happens, 
people reach out to the public how exactly did you all manage that i mean you all made i mean I, i know you all made some good money but everybody makes good money you see again that's what i say at the end of the day after the limelight after the this, this, this what is your true value as a human being your mm. value is the people you impact your value is look that you I'm, I'm, i'm here because it's that you baby face you understand It's the same dude that I called to come and MC my events that didn't even ask me for a penny and came there and did a very fine job Civic Center bro so what we see <laughs> if you have those kind of good deeds it's going to be difficult for a reasonable person not to respond to you you understand what I'm saying so at the end of the day you're getting that money now everybody's shouting but you think you are there's always a nest just like you're going to die <laughs> it's always a nest i don't care how big you are there's going to come a time where somebody is going to it's just like today the trailer at the point was was the biggest thing look i try to get people to understand that they some, some younger they people I'm like, no, I'm, like, they don't, i'm like you guys don't this, dear internet people i'm like them. you guys look, don't understand look. just how big Tony leave internet people was don't that don't, in a don't. show that had everybody I said think of all the stars that you know I said in a show that had everybody Tony mm. would close Tony, the show Tony was like at at a point even even bigger even bigger than plantation boys at a point oh yes you understand oh, at, yes. At that? and um then came these boys that Awiti has been pushing us to ah, that this boy I can remember when Sultan came in to he told me from just that this guy is Peter and Paul ah you need to check them out too. if you see as those guys they dance they do everything I said Peter and Paul eh? Peter and Paul so they, they are twins they are twins brothers they they can perform and everything I'm like oh, okay <laughs> the first time I'll meet them Sultan was not there it was at an award show they had in a, in a hotel I think they had the hotel in uh, um it was one of these award show they brought them to perform the hotel was in uh, uh Ikeja ah, I keep forgetting things these days so they had they were performing but it was it was not the sound was not helping that performance you understand the people were not really feeling them you understand but because Otana told me that these guys were good and I was there with my own long entourage we were there like <laughs> and I could see the guys they could connect with some guys behind there actually responded to them and they, they they pick up that performance and everything and there is always a movement then these guys went and came back and I saw people push to need their tool like way to go and look at these boys do you understand what I'm saying I've witnessed I've witnessed all this evolution the rise and the you rise understand. and seeming for the the rise and the not I so I could remember when Whiskey was in the studio when I'll be with OJB I would say ah this 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 ah the guy is good I know the guy is good ah this guy is very good OJB and the guy will come in gently ah and everything and today the guy has been able to achieve what no other artist in Nigeria has been able to do So it's going to be But wait, that must have been cool to remember that you knew Whiskey when he was not only uh, uh, not a star, you knew when he was a studio. Uh, with all uh, due respect, the word they use is studio rat, I think. More than rat. <laughs> More than rat. Because the dude was getting free session, he was there, he was moving, but he was he was a cool guy. He's never been he's no be today. He was always a cool guy. Yeah. You know, he was always a cool guy. And um seeing him around coming into the studio and everything you could see he was dedicated at an early stage and things like that and we almost signed him too because Sultan I know Sultan proposed that we should sign this boy but then I was like you sure <laughs> are you sure then Banky came up and Banky signed him you know so everybody is going to have their own time they're going to come in they're going to do great things and then the next is going to happen the next must happen so how do you react when the next comes you want to fight the next You can't fight the next the next is destined to ever to to happen and the next to do so what we're saying in other words is that there's a transition from this point to this point but because it's now for you don't think for one minute that there won't be the next and don't think for one minute that people hasn't gone through that road that is wisdom and humility of the mind that will make you relevant when it's not like that again you get me i'm babadi if you're a new artist i'm 
I'm, I don't, I'm in a show somewhere in the world. And somebody whispers to Timaya that Baba is in the building you know, and he stops his performance. I say, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you guys this. And he brings me on stage. I don't know what to say. I haven't been sick yet. <laughs> yeah, that's his honor. Was that happen when? Oh, yeah, everywhere I am. And there's a Nigerian artist in the world. I'm in Berlin. And it's happened to everybody. It's happened with uh, Peter P. Square. It's happened to. They always do that out of honor you understand and i and i and i respect that what else do i need to be fighting them or to do if you honor and if you don't honor me as well i don't I, it doesn't matter if you are somebody that i like the music i'll go and watch when you're around like ruga i think ruga is very interesting you know he has an angle to his song and if he's around and i'm opportune like we're in houston now my friend is telling me oh i booked this guy and this guy for uh i booked odumodu black and uh, what's his name um, uh, Charlie Poppin for my club in Dallas. I'm doing the after party. I'm doing this. I'm like, okay, maybe let's see if our trip aligns. Where my trip aligns? If I come in, I can come in and see that. Forgetting that, me, I was a UI boy. I was not just a UI boy. I was a regular UI boy. And I met I have friends all over the world from me, Badon, to Lagos and everything. Then it was not like this in our own time. We only had three major universities Unilag, UI, and IFE. If you are somebody or your father was somebody, you go to those three universities in Nigeria, not more private university or private. I was friends with so go fall fall back to this period of time. That network is still there. You know, that huge, huge network is still there. And I find out that, oh, it's the way you behave with people, that's the way people are gonna take you. So I I, I still leverage on that. I have a lot of good guys around the world. Um, um we've been able to do things that you know, so it's the grace. Grace is more than money. That's, 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 grace is more than money. Grace is a whole lot of money. So grace worked for him in that period oh, when you needed... I've never seen somebody... I've never seen... That's where I understand. I understood what grace was. It was It was a lot of grace. It was a lot of grace. And the best hospital in the world had the true friends, true God. Mm. True friends, true God. Mm true friends, true God, some of the best practitioners in the world, some of the best caregivers, some of the best, it was, it was just grace. And grace is much, much more than money. Mm. You know, I didn't even know about any of that. That for me seemed to happen very fast. I just heard that it was, it seemed to happen very fast. It came out of the blues. Yeah, it happened very fast. Everything happened very fast. It was, it was destiny. Everything happened very, very fast. Everything happened very fast. Hmm. Okay, uh, moving on. So, what are you doing in Sweden? You did mention you're in, in production. Ah, if you want to hear Uber story, me, I, I, I won't tell you any Uber story. <laughs> I said Uber story. I didn't ask you about <laughs> because you guys. No, I didn't, I didn't ask you about Uber. Hear, where you I just, hey, <laughs> <laughs> tell you I've been in Sweden since 2001. I've been going in and out of Sweden. Yeah. When you do something, you have to do whatever you do to survive. So I'm very, very surprised when you when people. Like some of our, uh, um, no no disrespect, I'm not countering anybody here. Yeah? But when you leave, you have to understand that, you know, life. I'm 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 still living off entertainment industry, and I'm not as active as before. But I'm doing things behind the scene that I'm leveraging on the people I know, the growth I've had, and for me, I say to myself, like right now, my journey in life. I was doing music, I was hosting shows, I had uh, a television program, I was acting, I have worked with most of the producers from uh, uh, Tunji Bami Shigmi to uh, uh, um, uh, Wali Adenuga to Taju Dinagwepe to, to, you understand? I've been through that route, that's my life journey. So right now I should be able to take my life journey and mold it into something that I can monetize. So that is what I'm doing. I'm monetizing my experience in life. So that's uh, and it's, it's, it's great. And if I have to go outside that as well to do realistic things and fold my sleeve, I do that and put everything together as consuming to my experience and to my journey that has been so, so lovely. Mm, you know, you just said something in that thing now and you, you went by it very fast. But I want to bring you back to it. You said that if you're if you're doing something and you leave uh, that thing that you're doing, you should keep doing 
wherever you go. So if you're an entertainer and you find yourself in America, for example, no matter how difficult it might be at the start onset, from scratch, put up your pictures, go for audition, do everything while you are still doing anything that you need to do to survive. Mm. You understand? Because they're gonna find you. They're gonna. The records don't lie. Records don't lie. I was in Sweden. I was trying to make a film. I do. I do TV series there as well. I've had my film there. If you Google film, Swedish Nigerian first Nigerian Nollywood filmmaker. Fe, uh, first Swedish Nollywood filmmaker in Sweden. A proper true interviews on radio, televisions, and everything because of because I've been able to take what I've done in Nigeria, bring it over to this point, and say, ah, this guy really did a film for Netflix when Netflix was still popping and everything. I could bring in people and still do that while you still do other things because it's not it's not uh, the journey it's the journey that matters it's just the journey <laughs> it's the journey so you have to keep working you yeah. have to keep working you have to be in the journey you have to keep being in the in the journey it's not everybody that i'm not asking everybody it's not everybody that can be in production it's not but if you have the love i'm a theater artist that's why i studied i didn't by mistake i didn't by mistake I went to Jam, wrote theater art. That was not enough in case Jam didn't work. Unilag started theater program in the music department, certificate program. I went there, auditioned. I was number two. The professor that picked me yesterday, I saw the son yesterday, he introduced himself, Osoy. Professor Osoy. The son is here in Houston. We're just, it was part of the my friends that came and I said, I'm like, ah, let me tell you about your dad. This, 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 this. Then I went to UI. Then I took diploma course. So this is what I've always, that's the point I, I, I tangled that I discovered myself at a very early age. You know, this is strange. You're the second guest back to back. You're the second guest in a row that is alluding to the same sentiment. Uh, Funcho Adioli was in that seat last week. He said almost exactly the same thing. He said, look, I'm a thespian to the core, and that's what I will be till I die. I mean, in not okay. so many words, but that's what he said. Funcho, like, Funcho, we, we've known, like, we, before we grade, before we, you understand, like, young, 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 young boys, like, that we could sit down and hang out and everything. And if I, so, it's like someone like Funcho Luna, Funcho now, I say Funcho, ah, money project, the first thing that comes to his own mind, I can speak for him. The first thing that comes to my Ghana, Baba Dimo Gudu. Because he can, he can, he can he keep, he keep track of my record. Like I can keep a track of his own record as well. You understand? Those are the things that eventually, that's why I said don't stop working. They are supposed to, you are, they are supposed to, you are supposed to leverage on them. They are supposed to be pluses, not minus. The journey is supposed to, so it's a, I don't old. No, it's not old. It's, it's, it's experienced. It's supposed to be pluses, not minus. The journey that we've been through. I am I'm a theater artist. I've never, anybody that went to UI, I didn't even go to that department. They will tell you that ah, no, those guys, they were, I was very, very involved and I was very, very active. You know, so that I would take anywhere. I will still be producing film. I'm going to Lagos in two months. We're shooting a television series for Nigerian Ninja. We're going there. We'll still be doing those things regardless. 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 And the people that wants to be part of what we're doing, if I reach out to you and say, ah, see how they do, 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 and you come through, I appreciate you. And when you ask for me, I, I, I respond. I reciprocate. So that's, that's what it is. Sultan turned up for a lot of people. Oh no no no! Larry had no 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 Larry had so, so Larry was our was Larry was our go to guy was our big it, it low hanging fruit big low hanging, hanging fruit. He was big, but he was always there for everybody for us. He just he just for showed. everybody. He for was everybody. always there. He would turn up for everybody. He would turn up for everybody. And now what? Everybody's everybody's there. Everybody's there for him. The likes of Bright, everybody's there for him, you know. So that's that's the whole thing. If you do, if you if it's arrogance that is your own way, you can keep doing it. You been life will show you what arrogance does after a while. Mm. If you decide to be a people's person and help when you can, life will also show you when the, the, the light will always dim. The, the, there's no point, there's no body in this life that look. This same person staying here, this same person staying with you, uh, there's a pair walking through and people and girls will scream. Ah! Now I don't even I don't even want that. That's not my priority. I don't even see that. Okay, so usually when our people 
uh, go abroad to plant roots for any reason, mm. and we're not going to use jackpa here. Mm. Uh, uh, it's um, it's a word that does annoy me as well yeah, in the, yeah. in the, in the colo- part of the internet thing. in it's, the connotation of, that it is used yeah, it's part yeah. Of the internet thing. once you live for any reason you have jackpot, you have jackpot. it's it's uh, well, let's not even get into that whatever happened to wanting to get another experience uh, experience now now let me tell you my own story from a child from like a teenage years i'd known that i was going to have dual citizenship i'd known that as well when I left Nigeria, I didn't have any reason to leave. I left Nigeria three weeks after I dropped Governor's daughter's video. You, you, you can't imagine. Oh, cops of that road, you bang, you know, Baba. The trouble is what you're doing. Knocking on the window, and mama 6.30, man, it must be the cops. Three weeks after dropping that video, that was when I left Nigeria. When I left Nigeria, I left Nigeria with about $6,000 a lot of money then when i left nigeria i left nigeria i sold a car my soul I, I no i gave out i didn't say i gave out my car i didn't have any business leaving nigeria that's what i'm trying to say but because i knew that my journey in life was such and i had the opportunity i left you understand and when i felt like it was time to come back i come i came back and i tried to level and when god has done some things you just is life is too big to be in one place life is a book and you stay in one page and you are staying on one page you're now flipping through the book i want to live my life bro i want to be everywhere that i want to be i want to see everything i want to see before the director shouts cuts so i want to be everywhere i want to have that full experience so if you like stay in one place and say you do you have to move around have the ability i knew what i wanted to do I knew what I wanted to do and God gave me the opportunity and I, I and I move around. So if you can, the only thing I advise is that don't lose track of home. Don't be one of those people that when they leave, they just X their history. Don't be. Once you, you are okay, go back to where you're coming from. Try to make an impact. Try to let people feel because the world, the globe is a book. You have to flip through. Don't stay in one place. Or oh, in the immortal words of one, uh, Larry Fasasi, oh, aka Sam Sultan, in the immortal words of one <laughs> wise man, Koda Bile, Koda no matter where you go, <laughs> make you not forget the real. Oh my god, that's that word. Everybody abroad can really resonate with it. I met, I was with my friends three days ago, and then they told me their South African experience. These are guys that are like model, they were big in Nigeria, and they said they had to be doing bartending somewhere. <laughs> Shout out to my man, anyway. Yeah, so it was, it was, it was bad. Any so I said they were walking to the tree and they had to like stay on. When they are coming back, they help on the ride. We said that they got to the house one day and their friend just said, "Yeah, you guys need to listen to this." Thing. And they played. <laughs> and they played. <laughs> you know, they said be they all started crying. <laughs> <laughs> I could relate because I was abroad then. You understand? So I'll just go so I say, Ah, that your brother, man. <laughs> <laughs> look, look. Is it worth it in the end though? Look, so this thing that you have said as we round this up is is that is that second passport worth it? Because many people are thinking oh, about it right now. Oh, uh, is that second oh, passport? Because look, because you're not going to get that passport without putting the time in. Bro, it's a project that everybody should do. For me, for me, for me, I don't know. Not everybody. I'm not telling everybody from Nigeria to do. But if you have the opportunity, that you are speaking to you, then I was like, I could be anywhere in the world tomorrow, my friend. True. So I'm I'm very grateful for that. It resonates with my spirit. It aligns with my purpose. It's what I want out of life. It's the greatest thing I have. The passport. The ability to move anywhere. I can link it to the passport. I don't know if it's the passport. I mean, it's the passport. I, I mean, I without... I don't know if it's the passport, but by your private, it's private done, done, done in two weeks' time and popping up in Lagos. Um, it's a beautiful thing mm. for me for the kind of nomadic life that God has prepared for me that I was going to you understand that, that has made my journey a whole lot simpler 
a lot, whole lot easier. It has made my life more fulfilling. I'm just telling you about linking up with guys I haven't seen in 24 years. Yesterday, people that haven't, you understand? So that's, to me, that's riches because at the end of the day, there's nothing you have in this world, nothing you acquire in this world. The moment the director shouts, cut, those things belong to other people and they might not even cherish him the way you have cherished. So keep saving that shit for one special day. <laughs> <laughs> or keeping that money in the account saying, somebody else is going to come and do that thing in the way that you turn in your grave in anger. I shit me no I had the same conversation with Daddy Freeza. It was, it, was, it was very, very, very interesting. It was very, very interesting. The moment is like when we place too much life and too much importance to things, and we we hold it like eh, without me, now me be this, now me no no be you, bro. Take it easy. Somebody else is gonna come to that post, and then there's gonna be somebody else. That that place that you sold out, that nobody has sold it out. So probably somebody's coming that will sell out stadium. Mm. That is life. That's what it is. So when you find some of our popping artists, some of our in the moment artists at the moment mm. making some of this uh, less than less than sanguine or less than mm. you know amiable statements uh living in what seems to be arrogance you just smile and say well okay. I, I pray i most of the time i just pray for them that don't don't go out like this god don't let you go out like this god will help you to understand the purpose of what he has given you the kind of power that he has given you god will let you understand the purpose god will help you manage the way you can take this purpose and channel to other things and you can benefit a whole lot of people by just your word not your actions, by just your word. So you can benefit a whole lot of, you know, life is that, when you don't see, you don't do, you were in school, you did everything that a student has to do. When you are outside, you grind when you're supposed to grind. You see everything that you're supposed to see. And you, you look at life differently when you are crossing some kind of things. And when people are around you, you notice that, if I tell you how many people around me that have seen that, that have died in the space of time, that guys I used to hang out with and people I used to know. And, you know, so you make you see, but I don't want them to, I don't pray for anybody to get to that point before you start seeing things differently because I've always had this mindset of seeing things like differently. The way you relate with people, the way the impression people have of you, helping the people that you can help. And when you achieve this thing, celebrate it. Yes, it's a big height, celebrate it. But think about the bigger purpose, how it can benefit Others don't beat anybody down. Is, is, is you don't beat anybody down, don't talk down on anybody. Try your best and uh, remain your own person, remain firm with your own person. Do things that are aligned with your purpose. You understand the world is abundance, there's abundance everywhere. Everybody will have abundance if you can find the frequency. Life is very open, life is sweet. Enjoy it. The big bad wolf, respect. I could keep talking to you. Look, I could keep talking to you. Ah. We've gone over and above. Thank you for doing this. I, Baba I really appreciate having you, and most importantly, the opportunity of seeing again Mr. Teju Yelaki. This is one guy, <laughs> one guy. This guy is old, though. Don't think he's uh, <laughs> not in Jersey. Look, look, I'm, Jack. Think, look uh, I'm a young man. Yeah, no, 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 I don't think Jersey. I was telling my friend when we were coming. Man, thank you very much. Bobby King of Talk. I wish you, you luck with everything thank you're you. doing. I pray for you. I'm rooting for you. Thank you. I've always wanted this opportunity. Thank you thank for you. having me. Thank you, Babadi. All right, boss. <laughs> There's a reason why I listen to the old archetypal, original, traditional, homegrown African music. I'm talking of King Sonia Day, Ebenezer Obe, Sikiro Ayinde Barista, Kolinti Ayinla, Orlando Owo, Orlando Julius, Fela Anikula Pokuti, and all the homegrown giants. It's that apart from the obvious melodies and the genius in those productions, it is the wisdom and the knowledge that resides and reposes in those verses. For example, it was Chief Commander Ebenezer Obe who said, That 
that track is called Late Oke Aminu and you can find it on YouTube. Now the wisdom in those verses or in that verse is quite straightforward. It is that if you're the one who's on top today, if you're the one for whom things are working out today, if you're the one who's living in the lap of luxury today, then remember and understand that tomorrow somebody else will be in your exact same position. They won't even be in a parallel position. They will occupy that same position that you hold right now. And tomorrow you could be all the way down. Now there is nothing new about that. You've heard that before billions of times even. In fact, you've even heard the opposite side of it, the flip side of it. Because for that to be true, then there has to be a flip side balance in it. This is life. For anything to be true in life, it has to have an opposite side holding it up. Call it the yin and the yang of life. For there to be day, there has to be night. For there to be light, there has to be darkness. For there to be good, there has to be bad. It's the yin and the yang of life. So for that to be true, that if you're up today, you could be down tomorrow, then it must be true that if you're down today, you could also be up tomorrow. Now, of course, you're familiar with that as well, that if you're down today, you could be up tomorrow as well. Perhaps you're even more familiar with it than the other side of it. What you might not be familiar with is what I'm about to tell you now. Now, this works for both ends of the ladder, for those who are up and for those who are down. But to keep this very simple and not to complicate matters, I'm going to focus on if you're down today. Not only because, again, not only because it's simple, but because there are more people who are down in the world at any point in time than there are people who are up. Now, did you know that if you're down today, if things are not working out for you today, did you know that if you did nothing, if you just sat down in a corner, if you did nothing, if you didn't watch success videos, you didn't read success books, you didn't look for mentors, you didn't hustle, if you sat down in a corner and you just managed to keep yourself alive for long enough, did you know that simply by doing nothing, your life is going to change for better sooner or later? <laughs> <laughs> I know, it sounds very strange, so I'll say it again. Did you know that if you're down on your luck today, if all you did was just sit in a corner and you did nothing else, you didn't watch videos like this, you didn't counsel with anybody, you didn't go out looking for mentors, you did nothing. If all you did was just manage to keep yourself alive, if you kept yourself alive for long enough, your life will change for the better just by the passage of time or more practically, you will have an opportunity to change your life for better. See. King Solomon said that I returned and I saw under the sun or I observed under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chance happens to all of them. In other words, just by being alive, time and chance is going to happen for you to change your situation in life for better. Or for worse, it works both sides as well. The first point here is this. You see all of this hustling that we're doing, all of this running around, all of this watching videos, reading books and all of those. Those things do not affect the outcomes of our lives as far as success is concerned one bit. Yes, I know it sounds strange, but that's the truth. See all of this running around that you're doing, all these success videos that you're watching, all these places that you're going to to listen to people, all these mentors that you have, all of those things do nothing to change your position or your fortunes in life. The Yoruba say, Kirakita Udola, Eruko Danko, Uluwa Ningbe Niga. It means that all your hustling, essentially what I've just said, all your hustling, all your running around, all your hard work, all your striving, all those things do not translate to success. Of, to an upswing in fortune, it is your head, Oluwa Tabi Orire Ningbenega. It is your head, your being, your creator that eventually lifts you or changes your fortune. Jesus said that which of you, by worrying about it, you can substitute the word worrying for hustling. Which of you, by hustling, by worrying, by all these many activities that you do, which of you can add just an hour to your life or add a cubic inch to your height? None of you. So what's the second point here? Am I saying don't do anything? <laughs> hey, don't do anything, K. You will starve. As I have said, you have to keep yourself alive for long enough for your opportunities to come. So you have to work. But secondly, and perhaps more importantly, 
all of these things that we do all of these watching wisdom videos reading books looking for mentors attending these seminars and doing all those things all of those things are not to change your fortunes in life all of those things are to prepare you for when your time and your chance and your opportunity shows up. Because if you have not gathered and harnessed the requisite knowledge and wisdom, you will fritter away your opportunities. You will not be able to maximize your opportunities when those opportunities eventually show up for you. That is why people remain poor and down forever. It is not because everybody does not get opportunities. It is that they don't spend time, time preparing by gathering wisdom and knowledge so that when the opportunity comes, so that when time and chance happens for them, they can maximize the opportunity or those opportunities. So here is the main crux of what I'm saying. Relax, just chill out. All this running around that you're doing, all this waking up in the middle of the night and all that that we're doing, all these many books that you're buying and you're trying to read 70 books a year, all these seminars that you're attending, all these men and mentors that you're going to and all of that. Look, it's, it, it's not bad, but, but chill out. I do realize that there is a degree to which those things are therapeutic because it's very hard for human beings to sit down in one place. We have a problem with just settling down. It's very hard for us. So I realize that all those things can be therapeutic. So I'm not saying don't do them. I'm not even judging you if that's how you find your therapy. I am just saying that you should know that your change in life or the upswing in life or the change of your fortunes in life is not bound in the pursuit of those things or in the activities of those things. I return again to Chief Commander Ebenezer Obe, who said in what is perhaps his most popular contemporary piece of music, Ai masi kolonda mueda o I think Simi even remixed that song not too long ago. The wisdom of that verse is that the problem with human beings is an inability to understand or to know the exact date and time when their fortunes will change or when they will enter the gates of success. Or perhaps it's an inability to even understand that there is such a paradigm in the first place. So as we close, my encouragement to you and for you or my enjoyment to you is to slow down, chill out. As we've established, it's not all this running around and all this hustling and all these calculations that we're doing that changes anything. All those things are good for and they are very needful is to prepare yourself for the eventual emergence of your opportunities. Now, there are people who are watching this who feel like it's what they 